Hello and welcome to another video. In this one, I'm going to be showing you my Lumina Neo editing workflow. I've got an image ready to go, so let's just jump straight into the editing room and start making some edits. So this particular frame was taken in Tbilisi, Georgia. It's of the Holy Trinity Cathedral. Now, before I get going on any kind of manipulation of light, contrast and things like that, I always like to remove any distracting elements of a frame that I'm not going to want to be there by the time I've finished editing. So first things first, there's a woman on the left hand side of the image. I'm sure she's a lovely woman, but um, for this particular shot, she's got to go. So I'm just going to head over to the erase tool, highlight her. Click erase and hopefully it's going to do the magic. So there she's gone. You can see there's still a little bit of a reflection. Always keep an eye out for reflection. So we're just going to just take that out, hit erase again. And she's gone. And there's a couple of guys who, again, I'm sure, lovely fellas, but they're all so distracting from the frame. So um, time to go. Now that's using Luminio's automated tool, just a quick highlight, and as you can see, they're gone. And now we can start editing the image in a way that we'd want. Luminio does have sky replacement, but I'm not actually gonna, I love the sky in this one, so I'm not gonna do anything with that. I'm actually gonna hit the develop tool, and here we can start just playing with the exposure. Let's have a look at the exposure, just lift it up a little bit. Yeah, that's, that gives it a little bit more oomph. Contrast wise, I have no real issues with the contrast. I'll add a little bit. I'm just going to jump in our curve tool just in the top here. I'm just going to make a little S, a little S with the curve tool. And you can start to see it gives it a little bit more power, a little bit more detail as well. Just bring those shadows down, just uh, those darks down a little bit. Yeah, I'm starting to like the look of that. Now, in terms of colour, I'm really happy with the white balance here. I think, I don't think going maybe a little bit cooler. Add a little bit of purple tint. Now, saturation is something I think people are always tempted to like. I see a lot of beginners pump up their saturation. That looks terrible. That doesn't look real. So I'm just going to very subtly bring up saturation same with the vibrancy that's starting to look good to me so we'll just do a quick before and after so you can see here the not much life to it but just a little subtle changes start to bring that image to life so the hsl tool is where we can start to get a little bit more creative now the blues are nice but i prefer my blues a little bit more towards the greens especially with the sky so i'm just gonna move the hue down I'm going to add a little bit more saturation on that blue. And I'm feeling there's some darkness, so I'm just going to lift up the luminance just a little bit. And that just makes that sky a little bit softer. Now, the building itself is kind of a yellowy orangey, and I think it feels a little bit faded at the moment. So I want to add a little bit more saturation to that. Not too much. And on the oranges, I'm going to go a little bit more towards the reds. And just lift that luminance up as well. Now, when I'm looking at the bushes and the trees, they feel a little bit dull here. And there's a great tool with Lumina Neo in the right hand menu just under the landscape tab so you're going to want to click landscape and there is the foliage enhancer and you'll see here as we begin to lift it up a little bit more pop comes into those bushes and it gives them a little bit more life now that's one way of doing it and you can also turn the hue just i'm going to go a little bit warmer on the foliage and you can see that that brings it up again we're just going to do a little before and after so we have this kind of nice frame, but very lifeless. 
and now it's starting to come to life. And really, I don't want to do too much more here. Um, we can experiment a bit for the sake of the video. So if you want to add a little bit of a, a LUT to it, you can do. You've got plenty here. You've got cinematic, creative, cross-processing, portrait toning. For this, I'm going to do creative. And let's have a look, see what we've got. We've got 1960. I like that. That gives it kind of a film-esque kind of look. 1990. Too much contrast for me. When I'm choosing a look, sometimes I just go by the name. Think, oh, that sounds like a cool name. So let's see what Kodak Chrome does. I do quite like that. So I'm going to settle on Kodak Chrome 3. Now, one thing I like, and a lot of people, it's a little bit like Marmite, as we say in the UK, you either love it or you hate it, is film grain. I love adding a little bit of film grain to an image. And that's what I'm going to do here. That's a bit too much. So if we take it down to around about a 10, that's a little, little bit more subtle. This is how we finished. We've we've still got the originality of the frame, but we've just given it a little bit more life and made it more ready for public consumption. And this was using Lumina Neo. As you can see, Lumina Neo is very snappy and its tools are very intuitive and it does an excellent job. If you're interested in signing up and using this software for yourself, there's a link down in the description. But yeah, let me know what do you think of this edit? What's your editing workflow like? Let me know down in the comments and I will see you in the next video. Thanks.